80% of our properties are still net positive rentals in July. But again, July is the busiest month. We just noticed a little bit slower, less moving. And I don't know why it's got to have, you know, the same macroeconomic factors affecting it as car sales, house sales, and it all boils back down to interest rates in the Fed. Just a self-storage update. The last two months have seen significant change. Um, as you know, May across our portfolio was one of the busiest months we've ever had. Very high rents, um, no deductions in street rates, a lot of rentals, and just overall very good month. Interest rates had already started to rise, so we were already very conservatively underwriting storage. But in May, the brokers kept saying, you know, we're still getting a lot of offers, a ton of activity, a ton of aggressive buyers, and the interest rate increases have not set in yet. June was a fine month, nothing to complain about across our portfolio, but definitely slower than May, which is rare because June, uh, it's historically... Um, April's April starts to pick up. Um, January, February, March, we get virtually nothing. Um, no net rentals. Um, you'll have move-ins and move-outs. Um, kids are in school. People aren't buying and selling houses. Storage is slow. April and May um, are starting to pick up. April, you start to see some moving. May is busier. And June and July are historically the busiest months in our business. Now, uh, in June and July, generally, you'll see as many rentals as you see in the entire Q4 put together and the entire Q1, the three months basically going two or one. June was slow, not super slow. We still had net positive rentals at probably half of our uh, markets, and we did a big rent increase. So listen, what I say here is just simply my anecdotal information, right? Um, we raise rents every six to nine months on current tenants. Um, that happened to be a big one, happened to happen in coming in June. So simply put, I don't have enough data. 9,000 rented units is not enough data. I get a ton of my market data from the REITs, their quarterly calls. This is CubeSmart, Extra Space Storage, Public Storage, Life Storage, U-Haul. And they have simply been on fire. There has been virtually zero bad news over the past year on these quarterly earnings calls. Now, if you listen very closely, well, I guess the good first, rents are going way up. Revenue is up 25, 15 to 25% year over year. Rents are up 15 to 25% year over year. Demand is strong. Business is booming. And we've ridden that wave. But when you think about, when you really dig deep and you really look past the you know rosy picture that the executives always try to paint of their business to pat themselves on the back, you'll see some signs of seasonality. You'll see some signs of, de of slightly decreased occupancy and the like. Now, seasonality has always been a big part of our business. Like I said, the winters are very slow. The summers are quite busy. Fall's pretty good months as well. But June was slow for us. I'd say 75% the rental traffic as May, which is unique. And again, I'm small, 9,000 units. I don't have enough information to really make macro statements, but I do have... 53 properties under management now. Some of them are doing very, very well still. Some of these markets where we acquired storage in the past six months and there's just not a lot of strong competition, not a lot of supply on the market. We bought one in, in middle Virginia that's just absolutely dominating. Our portfolio in upstate New York is doing really well. Um, a lot of our Southern properties are doing well, but it was slower. And we're still, across our portfolio, we're about 80%. So we were expecting, we're hoping to kind of lease up another 5% of our portfolio this summer. Going into the winter at 85, and then next summer, get up to 90. You know, it takes a little while to stabilize, especially when you drive rents really effectively, you know, move out tenants that are very price sensitive and aggressively price street rates. So just an update, I mean, six months ago, booming, up until May, booming, June slower. July has been slow too, relative. Still doing fine again, but we've seen a you know, slower move-ins. We've dropped street rates aggressively at some markets to lease up. Some of our new acquisitions in the winter where severe mismanagement left us at 50 or 60% occupancy heading into the spring. And we're aggressively spending on ads. And it's working. I mean, we're still net positive at, I'd say, 80% of our properties are still net positive rentals 
in July, but again, July is the busiest month. We just noticed a little bit slower, less moving. And I don't know why it's got to have, you know, the same macroeconomic factors affecting it as car sales, house sales, um, secondary goods sales, and it all boils back down to interest rates and the Fed. So I think overall, it's a really good thing, but we are very, very thankful that we have been disciplined over the past six months with underwriting. Again, of the last 200 deals we've underwritten and put offers on, somebody else has paid more than us on 198 of them. We've gotten two of the last 100 deals. It's been very, very frustrating for our team, harder than ever to find deals that pencil. And it's because we're underwriting realistic rent growth, normal move-ins, high interest rates. Well, I think some of the competitors are getting settled in and confident of the last 18 months of storage that that's just going to continue forever. So we're really thankful that we've been disciplined. We've lost a lot of deals, but I think the tides are turning. It just, it just feels different. So if I had to guess how the REITs are going to you know, release data on Q2, I think I got to look at it really close. I mean, May is part of Q2. That was an extremely busy month. April, May, June. April was very busy. May was very busy. June, we started to see a slowdown. So you're going to have to read really closely to see the real economic trends, and I don't think they'll really come through. I think it'll be a good quarter for the REITs. Again, just a uh, small guy making a guess, but I think Q3 will see some pain. I think Q3 will show downs, will show signs that street rates are dri- dri- dipping, that leasing is getting a little bit tougher, a lot of new supply coming on the market in big cities, not really where we operate, but in big cities. And overall, I think it'll be a down month. Now, what are we hearing from the brokers and what are we seeing in the market? We're finally seeing a bit of relaxation. We got a property under contract last week. And talking to some of the more active brokers in our space, one of our one of our favorites out of Florida, big shop, they've seen, they've traded six or they've listed six massive portfolios in the past two months. Massive. We're talking, when I say massive, I mean $50 million plus. Four of those six deals have retraded, meaning the, sell, the buyer who had it under contract just went back and said, I can no longer close at this price. Two of them met in the middle and the sellers wanted to sell. And two of them went to back up offers at, you know, who knows, lower or higher prices. Um, we did a soft, soft, you know, look at one, with one of our facilities at the market just to feel it out and see if it makes sense to sell a portfolio of about eight or 10 of our properties. And the market did not meet anywhere near what it would take for us to look at it. Whereas I think six months ago, it would have sold for our asking price. So where does that put us? I think in a really good position to buy some storage over the next six months, I hope. I really hope. I think a lot of these operators are going to see the market softening. They're going to get a little bit scared. They're going to start underwriting some of these rent increases. I think on the July 20, late July Fed meeting, they're going to, we're going to see another. I don't think we're going to see 25 basis points. I think we're going to see 50 or 75 because the Fed doesn't care about us. I mean, I know the market is pricing indifferent. You look at five-year treasury, the last month has been a decrease actually in interest rates. And that means the market is thinking that the Fed is going to back off. They might be right. They're a lot smarter than I am. But my estimate is that it's going to keep popping. And again, it's my job to protect the downside among my investors and my team. So uh, this is just a stream of consciousness thought on the state of the market, guys. If you have any comments for me, I'd love to see an email, nick at sweatystartup.com. And we're still growing and we're still acquiring and we are still hiring. If you want to get a job at Bolt Storage um, or just put your name in the hat for my attorney is hiring, my CPA is hiring, a couple other people in my network are hiring. If you want to put your name in the hat, go on sweatystartup.com slash apply, drop your resume, record a little one minute video about yourself and get in our system so we can reach out. But it's going to be an interesting time. I like where we're positioned. Um, a little bit scary, obviously, when interest rates go up so much so fast. But we're in a good spot. And I'm excited to navigate it and grow the portfolio and do well over the next five years. We're on a 10-year game plan, guys. So we're not going to stretch for deals right now with all this craziness. We're going to let the market come to us. Juniper Square, the sponsor of our show, recently did a capital raising survey. 
And in this survey, they asked 142 senior executives at US-based commercial real estate firms a series of questions to understand the state of commercial real estate fundraising. It's an insanely valuable report with data on questions like, how much capital did you raise last year? How long did your last raise take? What type of investors are you raising the most from? And what strategies are working the best for you to find new investors? Download this report for free at junipersquareresearch.com. That's junipersquareresearch.com. Big thank you to Juniper Square for sponsoring the show. Thank you for listening to The Nick Huber Show. Just wanted to remind you that we have a paid real estate community where some really special stuff is happening. People are breaking down deals. People are networking. People are, I think, even formulating partnerships inside this group. We have over 100 members now. Um, for more information, you can visit sweatystartup.com slash R-E-C. And the first 299 members of the group to get some momentum, get $200 off the annual membership using the code FIRST299, F-I-R-S-T-299. And also, you can check it out for five days for $1. You make a $1 payment, you can check out the community for five days. Highly recommend it if you're serious about bringing in uh, some other people into your network, into your life, to help you become a better real estate investor. 